This is the final video of a four-part series about installing and setting up an Amiga Workbench installation in WinUAE. In this video, I'll show you how to convert images in modern formats into images that can be displayed on Amiga. This video assumes that you've installed Workbench according to the prior video for the corresponding version of Workbench. If you haven't, then you might not be able to display the images on the desktop. Let's begin. Start by finding the website for Graphics 2. Go to Downloads and grab the installer. Run the installer. Graphics is kind of like Deluxe Paint and lets you do all sorts of stuff with various 8 and 16 bit graphics formats. Next, load GIMP up. And open the image you want to use. Once you load the image, you need to select a section with a 1.6 to 1 aspect ratio. It'll need to be 640 by 400, either by selecting an area of that size or by resizing a larger area. I'm making a copy of this and pasting it into a new image. Then I save it. For Workbench 1.3, you'll want to click this and then scale it to 640 by 200. The aspect ratio will look weird, but it'll be fine on the Amiga. Go to the Image menu, Mode, and select Index. Change this to four whole colors. Also, select the dithering mode or it'll look awful. Then export it as a ping file. Open Graphics 2 and click L to load the file. Go to PAL to adjust the palette as anything that is the same as a workbench color will cause problems. White is especially problematic. Click on S and save it as an LBM file. You can now load into Workbench 1.3. Since I don't have a file manager installed, I'll copy the picture using the shell. Copy it to your S drawer. Now open REdit and open the startup sequence. Go down to the bottom and have SimGen load your picture without the dash T option. Save and reset. Now you've got a converted background image for Workbench 1.3. For Workbench 2 non-AGA, you want to load GIMP and get an image opened up. This is the previously cropped image. Go back to the index color option and set it to 16 colors. Then export it as a ping file. Load it up in Graphics 2. Then go to the palette display. 
X swap colors 0 through 7 to over here. Then load the magic wb.pal file. Next, check to see if any of the colors from your image are the same as the magic wb colors. This is to see if you can use more than eight colors in a final image. Here, the only one that's the same is white. This means that we output a final image of nine colors. Now reload GIMP, your image, and go back to the color indexing. Set it to the number of colors you can use here. Export it as a ping and reload in graphics too. Go back to the palette menu. X-swap any of the colors that match the Magic WB colors somewhere else. Then X-swap 0 through 7 down to here. Now load the Magic WB.pal file. Finally, X-swap your extra colors with the Magic WB colors. Now you can save it as an LBM file. Load your Workbench 2 config. Copy your image over to sys prefs slash patterns. Then open WB Picture under Prefs. Load your image and save. And it looks totally screwy. To fix it, go back into WB Picture, click Load Palette, and Save, and that'll fix it. You'll have a desktop background, and all of your Magic WB icons will still have their correct colors. For Workbench 3.1 or AGA systems, load GIMP and get an image opened up. As I'm using an RTG board, I can use a larger image. I've got mine set to 1280 by 720, so I'll crop a 1280 by 720 area and paste it as the new image. I'm exporting this as both a ping and a JPEG to show you what it looks like using ping and JPEG. If you only have an AGA Amiga, you want to go back to the color indexing. I'm setting it to 248 colors to not interfere with the Magic WB colors. Export that as a ping. Next, load the image in Graphics 2 and load the palette display. X swap colors 0 through 7 with the final colors. Then load the magic wb.pal file to replace the low colors with the magic wb colors. Now export it as an LBM file. Load up your Workbench 3.1 config. Load WB Pattern under Prefs. Change the type to Picture. Then load a picture. The 
This looks pretty good if ever so slightly dithered. You can also load up ping and jpeg files if you installed the ping and jpeg data types from the previous video. That concludes this series of videos. If you like these, subscribe to my channel as I've got at least one more installation tutorial video coming up and... See you next time!